Hey, so it's been a while since we've done a tips and tricks video and a question we get asked a lot, and I mean all the freaking time, is about routers, specifically router templates. Where do you get the templates? How do you make the templates? When you get the templates, what kind of router bit should I use on the templates? There's bearings, they're on the top, they're on the bottom, they're on both, what am I doing here? So we thought, why don't we just make a video all about router templates? So if you haven't caught on yet, that's what this is. So follow along, learn something new, and if you have any questions, put them in the little comment section and we'll try and answer them. Don't know why I put my foot up there. Okay. Now a router template is just a shape. It can be made out of plywood, it can be made out of MDF, it can be made out of plexiglass. And what that shape allows you to do is take that shape and then using a router with a pattern bit, something with a bearing on it or a bushing, you can follow along on that shape and you can duplicate it. Now the reason templates are so awesome is because they allow you to make repeated shapes that are exactly the same size. But the question stands, if I want a template to get an exact shape on a solid piece of wood, how do I get a template that is the exact shape to begin with? I'm glad you asked, because we're gonna get into that right now. Now there's a couple different ways that you can get your template to start out with. Number one, you can just draw the shape you want onto a piece of wood. Now this is a template that came from our crosscut sled, and that's exactly what I did. This is a pretty simple shape, so just using some rulers, straight edges, and then some round things. I probably used a paint can to get this radius. I just traced out the exact shape that I wanted on a piece of wood, and I cut it out over on the bandsaw. Now I'm gonna give you a few tricks on cutting out templates in a second, but let's go on to some other forms of getting your template. Now the most accurate way that you can get a router template is to have it cut out on a CNC because this is a computer cutting out the shape for you and you don't have to worry about it. But you might be saying, well, if I have a CNC, why do I need a router template? I just have the CNC cut out all the pieces, which, well, that's a very good and valid point. I guess that's the end of the video. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You CNC people might wanna just still make stuff by hand. To be honest, I don't know what you CNC freaks like to do. Anyways, I don't have a CNC, but what I do have is this guy, the Shaper Origin. It's kind of like a CNC, it's like a handheld CNC, a little zip zap zoop and you get it in there. I use this to cut out templates all the time, but to tell you the truth, I would not want to use this to cut out all of my pieces because it would take forever. You got to lay down that weird domino tape and you got to do multiple passes around and around and around. And if you just make one template using something like this, it is so much faster because you can just slap that template on top of a piece of blank stock and you're done. But what if you don't have a CNC and you don't have a shape or origin and you still want accurate templates and you want to be able to cut them out in your own shop? Well, not to worry, my friend, have I got a solution for you. Another one is to use printed out paper templates. Now we actually sell a lot of these with the plans that are included on our website, bourbonmoth.com, there's a link in the video description. And the way that these work is they come on multiple sheets of paper, so you can print them out on your home computer printer. And then on each piece you have these tiny little crosshairs that help you line up the section and get it oriented exactly right. Now because I need to line up the crosshairs on this piece of paper with this piece of paper, I like to just stick it over a window or a door, and that way it kind of creates a little bit of a light box, and I can make sure I get those crosshairs exactly lined up where they need to go, and then all I have to do is tape the template together like this. Now when I'm taping it together, I want to make sure not to get any of the tape on the actual lines for our shape. So this shape is from our desk build, actually. Here's a template that I already have made, but as you can see, with all three of our pieces taped together, it roughly makes this shape. But now we have to get it cut out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of plywood that will fit that shape on there, and then we're gonna take some spray adhesive, and we're just gonna spray this whole piece of plywood. Then all we're gonna do is take this and make sure that your shape fits completely onto that plywood and we're gonna push it down so that paper sticks. Spray a little bit under there, stick that down so it stays, 
and do the same thing over here. Now we have one continuous shape on our plywood and all we have to do is cut it out over on the bandsaw. And there you have it. Once you get the general shape cut out, I like to take a little sandpaper and then just by hand go clean it up a little bit. But as you can see, if you cut away from your line and then you just creep up to your line with a sander, you can get a pretty accurate shape. But here's the piece that I cut out by hand. Here's one that was cut out using a CNC. And as you can see, they're pretty darn close to the same shape. Woo! Oh yeah, I almost forgot. One little note when you're making templates in your own shop is what you're making your templates out of. Now lots of times I'll just use plywood, which is totally fine as long as you're using a nice birch plywood without any voids. The reason voids can be a problem is your template is gonna be used with your router bearing riding along that template. And if there's a void in your plywood and your bearing kind of hits that void, well it's gonna show up in your final piece. So if you wanna be really safe, use an MDF core plywood or just straight MDF because you're never gonna to have to worry about voids. It's gonna be perfectly smooth and you'll get a really nice template every single time. All right, so you've got your template, you cut it out, whether that was on the CNC or shaper or by hand or the paper templates, whatever. And now you're ready to actually cut this shape out of some solid stock. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is of course, well, get a piece of solid stock. For this, I'm gonna use this chunk of white oak. Now, most of the time, you're gonna be making multiple pieces. Now, you don't wanna just stick your template on there and rush over to the router table and start cutting because you're gonna have a lot of excess wood. Now, not only is this gonna be a dangerous way to cut it out because you're gonna have wood on both sides of the router blade, which is gonna do what we call a climb cut, and it can really run away on you, but it's not gonna be a very clean cut. So we wanna get rid of some of that excess before we start cutting our actual shape. So I'm gonna take my template and I'm gonna use that to trace out the shape onto my stock. When I do this, I like to use a Sharpie because it makes a nice, thick line. Now the trick when rough cutting your shape is to whatever you do, do not go into the actual shape itself. You wanna leave that for the router, which is why I like using the Sharpie. That nice thick line gives me a good reference line and I know as long as I stay on the outside of that line, I'll be good. So you wanna cut as close to that line as you can, but you don't wanna go over the line. You wanna get right up to it, but you don't wanna go through it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> The closer you can get to that line, the easier it's gonna to be to run through the router table because you're gonna be removing less material than if you leave a bunch of meat on the bone. But now that you have your piece roughly cut out, the next thing we need to do is we need to stick our template onto the piece and actually cut out our final shape. Now when you're hooking your template onto your stock, you can ignore your trace line at this point. It doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters is that you have a little bit of wood overhanging every single edge of your template. If you got that going on, you're golden. I feel like I have been a connoisseur of double-sided tape since I started woodworking, and I've gone through a lot of different types and styles of double-sided tape looking for the perfect one. And the one that I've been using for the last couple years because I just think it's the best is this double-sided carpet tape. I'll put a link in the video description. You can get some of this. It is great and it lasts a long time. But let's say you're in your shop, you need to hook a template to your piece of stock and you don't have double-sided tape. Not to worry, I have a solution. You can get away with using some regular blue painter's tape. Now what you're gonna wanna do is first take some of that blue painter's tape and you're gonna stick it on your actual stock. Just like this. Then you're also gonna take some of that blue painter's tape. I guess it doesn't have to be blue. It could be green or orange, purple, indigo. And you're gonna stick some onto your template as well. 
Now you're not gonna wanna make the mistake that I just did, where you put it on the wrong side of the template so it doesn't actually work. So we're gonna speed this up real quick and we're gonna fix our mistake. All right, now that we have it stuck to the right side, so you can do blue tape to blue tape, all you're gonna need is some CA glue, super glue, whatever the heck you wanna call it. Stick some of that on the blue tape, take your accelerator spray, spray it on the other side, and then very carefully making sure you still have some wood overhanging on all of your edges, you're gonna stick those two pieces together. Now what we've essentially done here is created our own double-sided tape just using super glue and blue tape. This will work, it does take longer, and it is a little harder to get the pieces apart, so I don't like to use this when I don't have to. Get yourself some of this double-sided carpet tape, it works great, and it's super easy to use. Now that we have our template stuck to our stock, we're finally ready to cut out our shape. But before we do that, we need to have a little conversation about router bits and which bits you should be using when you're template routing. Now the way template routing works is by using a router bit with a bearing to ride along your template and basically transfer the shape of your template onto your stock piece. Now how this works is the bearing is the exact same diameter as your cutting surface on the router bit. So as that bearing rides along the template, it is perfectly in line with the cutter head that is simultaneously cutting out your piece to match the shape of your template. And when you're thinking about the orientation of the bearing on a router bit, you have to think how that router bit is installed in a router. Now, traditionally, the router bit would be installed like this. So, if there's a bearing down at the tip like this, that is a bottom-mounted bearing because it would be towards the bottom of the router bit. If there was a bearing at the shank here, that would be a top-mounted bearing. Now, I know this gets confusing because once you put that bit in a router table, well, then it's reversed. And now that bottom mounted bearing is suddenly at the top, and then the top mounted bearing is suddenly at the bottom, and that's where you're like, is it a top, is it a bottom? I don't know. But this is a bottom, and this would be the top. I'm like 85% sure that's right. Now, if that's not confusing enough, there's a third option. You can get a router bit where there's a bearing actually mounted at the top and the bottom that looks something like this. Now the reason the orientation of the bearing matters is it all depends on how you're gonna be running your piece through the router. Now, if you're gonna be running your piece, let's say a router table, and this is your router table surface, and you're running your piece along like this with your template on the top, then obviously you're gonna need a bottom mounted bearing so that as the router bit sticks out of the table, it can ride along that template. However, if you're gonna be running your template down with your stock on the top, then you're gonna need the opposite. You're gonna need a top mounted bearing so that it can come in contact with that template before it gets to the stock. That's why sometimes it's nice to have the double bearing set up so that you can change the orientation of the bearing just by lowering or raising the bit up and down like that. Now you might be saying, why would you ever want to run your stock with the template on the bottom? Why not always pick one orientation, run it like that, and then you only have to have one bearing? Well, there's a couple different circumstances where you might have to run it one way or the other. The most common one is you're running some stock through the router table that is too thick to be accommodated by the length of your bit. Let's say that you have a four inch thick piece of stock that you're trying to template route but your bit is only, I don't know, two and a half inches, what you're gonna have to do is use a combination of a bottom mounted and a top mounted bearing and go halfway through on one side and then halfway through on the other side. So using those two different combinations, you can get a lot thicker stock routed out than you could with a single bit. Does that make sense? Now, along with there being different orientations of the bearings on the bit themselves, there's also different types of bits and the direction of the cut. Now, a traditional router bit would look something like this. It has what we call straight blades on it, which are blades that are perfectly straight. Now, this is kind of an old school router bit, although they're still being used by people all around the world, mainly because they haven't heard of a compression bit. Now, before we talk about compression bits, let's talk about spiral cutting bits. Now, a spiral cutting bit is gonna look something like this. Instead of straight blades, the blade is gonna spiral around the shank of the router bit. Now, these come in two different forms. 
you can get an up cut bit or a down cut bit. And what that means is the direction that the blade is traveling. For an up cut bit, the spiral is actually cutting up as it spins. Now an up cut bit can be really nice if you're cutting a channel through something, because as you cut that channel, what can happen is the bit can leave a lot of sawdust and debris and it can be impacted in that channel and make it hard to cut. But the up cut bit actually pulls that material out of the channel as you cut and makes it easier to cut and gives you a cleaner cut. However, the downside to an up cut bit is it can cause a lot of chip out because the direction of the cut is coming up across the surface of the material that you're cutting as it cuts up, it can chip out that upper surface if you don't have a waste board or a template pressed firm against that surface of your material. This is where a down cut bit can come in handy. A down cut bit is cutting in the opposite direction and because it's cutting down into the wood, it gives you a nice, crisp, clean cut as it moves around the upper surface of your material. Now, there are benefits to the up cut, there are benefits to the down cut, but what if I told you that you could have a bit it is the best of both worlds. Ooh, let me introduce you to the compression bit. If an up cut bit is cutting up and a down cut bit is cutting down, the compression bit is that special hug they cause in the middle. As we all know, special hugs sometimes lead to kids. Meet little Joey compression bit. <coughs> this particular compression bit is from Bits and Bits. They have a wide selection of these and they are the only bits that I will use to do router templating. The reason being is that you don't really have to worry about grain direction too much. For example, this bit has no problem going from long grain to end grain and back around the other side. Where the straight knife bit, for example, if I was to do end grain with this bit, well, it wouldn't end too pretty. If you don't believe me, just look at this clip from Craig trying to use this exact bit to build his bench. It's gonna be interesting right there where he gets to the end grain. I would be shocked if he doesn't get a little tear out on this with those, oh, see, slow-mo. <laughs> The reason you get such a smooth cut with a compression bit is because as the grain direction changes, you already have a blade that is probably moving in the right direction to accommodate that grain direction. Now, if you look at this bit from CMT, you can really see what I mean by compression. You can see it's both cutting down at the top and up from the bottom at the exact same time, which ultimately gives you that really nice smooth cut. Now there's one other way that you can template route without using a bearing mounted bit. Bearing mounted bit? Sure, that's a good thing to call it. And that is a bushing. Now a bushing is a piece of metal that looks something like this that actually mounts in the bottom of your router. Now a bushing allows you to take a normal router bit and essentially turn it into a template routing bit. The way it works is you take your router, I'm not gonna use a whole router, here's just the router plate, and the bushing hooks into the bottom of the plate like so. Now most routers are set up to accommodate a bushing. Then you have the bushing ring, that hooks on the inside of the plate and it locks the bushing in place. Now this bushing is perfectly centered inside of your router plate like that. Then the router bit that's hooked into your router goes through the bushing and comes out the bottom. And essentially what this is doing is creating a template routing bit. The only difference is instead of a bearing mounted at the top of the bit, you have the bushing collar right here. That collar rides along the template the exact same way that a bearing would, and it cuts out your piece. Now you might be asking, if you can use a bushing to accomplish the same thing that you can do with a flush trim router bit and a bearing, why not use a bushing all the time? Well, a bushing actually has a huge disadvantage. Now the bearing on the top of a flush trim router bit is the exact same diameter as the cutting surface of the bit itself. The bushing, however, sticks out past the cutting surface, which means that if you're using the bushing to ride around your template, you have to accommodate for the thickness of the bushing because it's gonna make your cutout piece that much larger. Are you tracking with me on this? Now that I've gone through bearings and bushings and bits and all that jazz, we're almost ready to cut our piece out, but there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. Now, I'm gonna take this over to my router table and use that to cut it out because it's safer, I can hold onto the piece and I can bring the piece to the bit rather than holding onto the router and bringing the bit to the piece. But I understand that not everybody has a router table and for the longest time, I didn't have one myself and there's still a way to do this safely without using a router table. The difference is instead of taking your template and hooking it onto your piece and holding your piece, 
What you're gonna do is create a larger template. For this, I used three quarter inch stock. And then you're gonna actually hook your template down to a substrate of some sort. You can use a scrap piece of ply like this, or you can use double-sided tape and actually stick the entire template to your work surface. What this allows you to do is have a big surface like this that you can then take your rough cut stock out, hook onto that piece using double-sided tape, and then you can hold the router with both hands and have a nice secure surface to get around your piece and template out your shape. If you're gonna be cutting out smaller pieces without a router table, I highly recommend building some sort of jig like this so that you can do it safe and keep all your fingers. But we don't have to do that because I have a router table. It's right over there, come on. All right, so we're finally ready to cut out our shape. Now, I have a pattern routing bit in here. It is a compression bit, now you know what that means. And it is a bottom mounted bearing, even though it's at the top, because remember, we do it reverse, like that. Now, you could do this with the bearing at the top, so it would be down here, and you could flip it over, so the template would be like that. The reason this scares me is because then you have all that blade up here and it just seems a little more dangerous. I like it when the bearing is up at the top there and it's riding along the template like that and then the blade's all down there. It just seems like an added level of protection. Is this real? I don't know, but it seems that way in my mind. All right, the most important thing, I'm just gonna throw it out there right now, when you're running anything through a router is to make sure that you're running it The most important thing when it comes to using a router table is to make sure that you are running your material through the blade in the correct direction. If you don't, well, it's not going to end very well. And if you don't believe me, I'm gonna show you right now what the difference looks like running it the right direction and the wrong direction. Now, why is it so important to run your material through in the correct direction? If you think about how a router bit works, when I run a piece through this way, how I'm standing in front of the router bit right now, it is spinning counterclockwise towards the piece. So as I run it through, I'm in complete control of the speed in which that piece is being ran through the blade. Now, if I reverse the piece and I run it through the opposite direction, I'm actually running it through the same direction that the blade is spinning away from me. That's what's called a climb cut. And what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna wanna take that piece and pull it out of my hands at the same speed that the router bit is spinning. Now, if you're just removing a little bit of material with a compression bit like this, you can get away with it sometimes. But if you have too much material that you're removing, the bit is gonna to wanna to grab that piece, throw it out of your hands, and it becomes quite dangerous. So always make sure you're running the piece in the correct direction. Now, if you're holding a router above a piece in a traditional kind of orientation, the easiest way to know which direction to run the router is to take your right hand with your thumb, make kind of a reverse L like this. If you stick your thumb against the piece, whatever direction your finger is pointing, that is the direction you should be moving the router. That means if you hold it like this, you should be going this direction. If you hold it on the opposite side, this direction, it even works on the inside of a circle. Whatever direction your finger is pointing, that is the direction the router should be moving. Now this gets a little tricky when you're working with the router table because everything is upside down, so it's kind of the opposite. So what I like to do is mentally climb inside my brain, flip myself upside down, and then in my mind, do the same thing. And then you can figure out what direction it goes in. Does that make sense? So we're finally ready to start running this thing through. We know the direction we wanna move. We have our bit in here with our bearing on the top. There's just a few things we wanna double check before we get going. Number one, the height of our router blade. We want that bearing to be fully seated on our template and not touching our actual stock at all. If it's touching the stock, it's gonna reference the stock for the cut shape and it's not gonna reference the template and, well, it's just literally not gonna do anything. You're gonna wind up with the exact same shape that you started with. So make sure that your bearing is seated nicely on your template. Next, 
we want to slowly start to run our piece through the blade on the long grain. Do not try and start your cut on the end grain. That's when things are going to get, well, a little hairy. Now, you can just turn the router blade on like this and slowly ease your piece into that blade and you'll probably be totally fine. If you're not quite comfortable with that, usually your router table will come with one of these little peg thingamabobs. Now, it's got a technical name and that name is Peg thingamabob? I honestly don't know what this thing's called, but basically this peg screws right into your router table like so. And this gives you a surface to start your piece on, get nice firm pressure against that peg, and then slowly ease your template and your stock into the blade while keeping pressure against that. This can just take a lot of the guesswork out of if you're putting too much pressure on that blade to start out with, you can really ease into a cut and it can be a lot safer that way. Now lots of people will tell you that the safest way to run something through a router table is to actually not put your hands on the piece but to use paddles like this. This is where I have to disagree. If your piece is large enough and you are comfortable holding onto the piece, you are never gonna get a more secure grip on the piece than with your own hands. That being said, if you ever find yourself in a situation where the piece is so small that you're uncomfortably putting your fingers close to the spinning router blade, stop, don't do it, find a safer way that you can run that piece through. After we cut a couple pieces here, I'll show you some tricks on how you can cut small pieces safely, but we'll get to that in a second. For now, Let's cut this shape out. And just like that, we have now perfectly cut out our shape following that template on the router table. So now we have to very carefully get our template off of here. And you want to do this in a way that you're not going to snap your template in half because, well, you probably want to reuse your template. So you're just going to start at one end and you're going to slowly work your way down until it all starts to pop off just like that. And there you have it exact shape that we wanted. That looks pretty good. Now you could see as I was running this through that I was always running it in the same direction and that as I got to the end grain, I made sure to keep tight contact with the bearing as I rolled around the edge to start cutting that end grain. End grain is notoriously tricky to cut out on the router table unless you're using a really nice sharp compression bit. If you try and cut end grain in that same way with a straight knife blade, well, it could end bad. To demonstrate the difference between using a compression bit that's doing both up cut, down cut, spiral cut at the same time on end grain versus a straight knife bit, I've come up with this little experiment. Now I've got two pieces of white oak. I've added these little squares of plywood as a template. We're gonna start cutting on the edge of both piece first with a compression bit, and then we're gonna transition into that end grain. Now with the compression bit, it should cut just fine from that long grain onto that end grain. I don't think we'll have the same result with the straight knife bit, but we'll find out here in a second.
Now, if you hold this board as tight as you possibly can using all your strength to keep that bearing close to the edge, you can make it through that cut. But you saw how easy it was to make this thing kick back. And then you see the quality of the cut on the straight knife bit. Not great, got a ton of tear out when it gets to the end of the cut versus the compression bit, which is pretty clean all the way across, cut like butter. I'm not pushing nearly as hard, don't have the tear out, ultimately a cleaner and safer cut than that straight knife bit. So hopefully I've given you a pretty good understanding of template routing, router table, different types of bits. There's one other thing I wanted to cover before we get to the end of this video, and that is what to do if you have to template route very small items. Now you can imagine if you have a really small piece of the template, you don't want to get your fingers that close to a spinning router bit. That's going to be pretty scary and well, you might not have all your fingers when you're done. So there's a couple different things you can do. If you have one of these wooden screw clamps, these actually work really well. You can insert a piece of wood like that, hold it really nice and secure. And now you can hold your hands all the way back here as you manipulate that piece of wood through your router bit. This can work really well, but sometimes if your piece isn't perfectly square, it's hard to get it locked tight into the screw clamps. So if you have a coping sled, now traditionally this would be um, used for making rail and style cabinet doors. This will hold your rail in here and it will cut your tenon on the end, but it also works for holding any type of small piece. You have this piece right here that can slide tight against there, clamp a piece in so you can really get it close to the router blade. This one also has this nice clamp mounted up here so that you can kind of get stuff at a different angle if you need to and still work it through the router blade such as that. Anyways, screw clamps, coping sled, and if all else fails, one of the methods I actually use more often than not is you just take your piece, take some double-sided tape, and stick your piece directly to your work surface. Then you can come in with an actual router, hold it in your hand, and follow along on that template. And then you just pick your piece up, and you're done. Now, I know there is so much to cover when it comes to routers and templates and router tables and bits, and I've just scratched the surface. So hopefully you found something in this video informative. Check the link down below in the video description. We got links to all the products and little supplies that we used in this video. There's a link to our website where you can get our plans and lots of those plans include those paper templates. There's a link down there to our uh, Patreon. If you're not signed up on Patreon, then if you have more questions about the router table, well, you can join our YouTube live that we do every Monday and you can just ask those questions directly and I'll answer them. And you can also get on there and tell me all the things I was wrong about. And if you think I was wrong about anything in this video, please put it down in the comment section because, well, we could really use the engagement. So, comment away. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that video and I wanted to give a huge thanks to the sponsor of our video, Squarespace. Now, I use Squarespace personally because believe it or not, I don't know a ton about computers and Squarespace is really good at making it easy for anybody to create a professional looking website and you don't have to be a web designer. Let me show you. So the thing I love about Squarespace is it is incredibly easy to add products to your website, like these sweet new diner mugs that we just came out with. Huh? Look at that. Woodwork is good work. Hats, mugs, it's everywhere now. But let's say that you're selling these on your website, but you also want to sell merchandise in person. You know, maybe you got some local customers, they want to come by and pick something up. Well, you can link the Square Card Reader with the Squarespace app. So when you take somebody's credit card in person, it automatically updates the inventory on your website. I mean, that's like crazy futuristic stuff right there. And the cool thing is you can add as many products to your website as you want. Like if you want a million products on there, well, you can put a million products because it's unlimited and you don't have to just do physical products. The thing I really like is that you can also do digital downloadable products like our plans. We don't want to send you guys a bunch of paper and cut down trees because we care about trees. We want to save those to be cut down for us to build furniture out of. 
So instead of sending paper, we like to just send the plans directly to your email and you can download them whenever you want. They make it super simple to create a custom website that fits your needs perfectly. They got a bunch of different templates to choose from. You go on there, you pick the template that best works for your website. And if the template's not perfect, well, you can customize it to fit your needs exactly. So if you want to check it out, go to squarespace.com slash woodworking and you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain when you use coupon code bourbonmothwoodworking. Or you can click the link down in the video description right there. Use that coupon code bourbonmothwoodworking, 10%. I mean, that's pretty good.